Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. This month we have a special focus on the Arctic and Siberia with an exclusive report from northern Russia where the permafrost is melting and the landscape is changing fast. During the last hundred years, the number of drained lakes has increased by 20 times compared with previous centuries. But first, let's start with the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. Globally, it was the third warmest July on record, behind July 2016 and 2019, with temperatures 0.5 degrees Celsius above the 1981 to 2010 average. If we have a look across Europe, it was a mixed picture. We can see on this map of temperature anomalies for Europe and the Arctic region that in Spain and Portugal, it was warmer than average in the UK and Scandinavia. It was cooler than average in July. And then in the Arctic region, you can see here in red, it was significantly warmer than average, particularly along the northern coast of Siberia. And if we have a look at that same area with this map of sea ice concentration anomaly, then you can see the warming trend is confirmed. Here in red, these areas saw significantly less sea ice cover than they would expect for the month of July. And in many cases here, it was just open water because the ice had melted away. Now, there are all kinds of complex processes underway in the Arctic and Siberia as the planet warms up. So what does that really look like on the ground? What can you actually see in terms of the effects of climate change? Well, our correspondent, Galina Polanskaya, met up with a Russian science team in Western Siberia for this special report. This is Yamalo Nenets, one of the regions of Western Siberia which had an unusually mild winter and a record-breaking heat wave in May. Just below the surface here, you find permafrost. Now, in early August, scientist Sergei Loiko is measuring how deep he needs to dig to reach the solid layer. It's much further down than expected. So, instead of a normal 40 centimetres, we see here about 55 centimetres. Normally, this depth of the active layer can be seen at the end of summer or in the middle of September. So, the permafrost has gone about one month deeper, and in autumn it would sink much deeper. As the permafrost melts, it releases carbon and other minerals into the environment. All around this Siberian site, the scientists see significant changes. Our research at this key area and other areas show that the climate is getting warmer. The ecosystems are reacting and they're reacting differently. If you look at everything that's related to the stability of the soils, we see that they become less stable. We see lakes drying up and active peat accumulations starting. We set out to visit one of the many recently dried up lakes in this part of Western Siberia, a phenomenon directly linked to climate change. About 15 years ago, we'd have seen a lake shimmering here. The lakes are disappearing because the solid permafrost layers which have stabilized this land for thousands of years are breaking up and water simply drains away. Winters are warm during the climate warming phase. Since they're warm, they're also more snowy as a rule. The soil and the stream bed which are under the snow don't have time to freeze properly. And so when a large mass of meltwater accumulates and begins to press down, first it removes the snow and as the soil is melted it gets pushed out of the way like with a bulldozer and the watercourse is cleaned out. As the watercourse is cleared and the banks are destroyed, the lake starts to sink and disappear. Another consequence of climate change, the tree line is advancing northwards. The forest creeps towards the Arctic as the permafrost layer sinks lower, leaving fertile soil behind. Here we can see the young trees. This one sprouted in 2005 and looks really well. And you can see how these trees are moving onto the marshes. This vast region is warming faster than other parts of the planet because of what are called positive feedback loops. One example 
If the snow melts earlier, it exposes darker land beneath, which absorbs more sunlight and warms up even further. There are other feedback effects too. There's a point of view that the melting of permafrost might provoke the acceleration of this process. So the melting is accelerating itself, because when the permafrost melts and becomes melted soil, it starts to breathe and release greenhouse gases. And these gases increase the greenhouse effect in the atmosphere. So the melting increases and accelerates. You can read more about what's happening in Siberia, watch other videos about the effects of climate change and see all the data presented in this programme on our website, euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.